Hello, my name is Eric Bach, and welcome to another session of Techniques brought to you by NEI. In this session, we'll cover setting up arc pad and tremble positions to use real time corrections from a single base. Differential GPS is the precise measurement of the relative positions of two receivers tracking the same GPS signals at the same time. The base station is over a known coordinate as depicted by the yellow triangle in the picture. The base station GPS receiver compares the calculated GPS position to the true location and then calculates the difference for each GPS satellite it tracks. This information can then be used by other rover receivers to correct for the GPS errors in their measurements. Common types of differential GPS include Satellite-Based Augmentation System, or SBAS. This is a free service that can be used on a handful of devices. And in the US, the common version of SBAS is called WAS. In the beacon category, Coast Guard Beacon is used in the United States. Certain devices include the Pro-XR, the Pro-XRS. External devices would include the old beacon on a belt or a geo beacon. OmniStar is a paid service that is available to use on some of the Trimble Pro XRT and the old Pro XRS devices. You have the ability to use your own base station for a single base. And then virtual reference stations are becoming very popular among Department of Transportation, some universities, as well as a few private entities. Here's a visual representation of what using your own base station would look like for receiving real-time corrections from a single base. We'd have our field worker collecting satellites and then receiving corrections from a base station either via radio signal or internet via MiFi or integrated cell modem or tethered cell phone. This is a list of all the current single base and VRS real-time correction providers in the NEI territory. Feel free to click on any one of the links under providers to bring you to their web page or visit neigps.com and look under the questions section. All right, with ArcPad open, we're going to click the drop down arrow under the satellite icon and look for GPS preferences. When this opens up, we're going to scroll to the right and go to the datum tab. Now, our GPS datum needs to match the correction datum of the real time correction source. We're going to click on the drop-down arrow next to DWGS 1984 and scroll in the list until we find D North American Datum 1983 underscore Harn. Now, if you don't know your datum, I recommend you contact the provider of the real-time source to find out what datum and epoch this is going to be in. It's very important. All right, we're going to activate the Tremble Positions toolbar and then turn on Tremble Positions. When the window pops up, we're going to click on Sky Plot and choose Setup. And the first thing we're going to choose in this Setup menu is GNSS Settings. In here, we want to make sure our accuracy settings are going to be set up for in the field. So we're going to click the wrench and make sure we change this if necessary. When I'm finished, I'm going to click on Done. And then I'll click on Done again to get out of GNSS settings. Now I'll go into Real Time Settings. And under Choice 1, where it says Use Uncorrected GNSS, we're going to change this to External Source. Now we're going to click on the wrench next to External Source and make our changes. Our type is going to be Single Base. Our connection method is going to be the Internet. And then we would type in our IP address of the base station we're getting corrections from, as well as the port. We're not going to choose anything under source. Connection control is going to be set to auto, and we're going to keep the station ID at any. When we're finished, we'll hit done. Choice two, you have the ability to use uncorrected or wait for real time. We're going to use wait for real time. And our age limit is going to be set to one minute. This means that if we lose connection, It'll use corrections for one minute and then stop. Now that our real-time settings are finished, we're going to click on Done to exit out, and then we're going to exit out of Trimble Positions. The 
final step is to test everything out. We're going to start off by clicking on the satellite icon to activate the GPS. Then we're going to go inside of Tremble Positions. You'll notice two cables trying to connect, and when they do, you'll see a satellite icon with the number next to it. In this case, we're tracking zero satellites. And then the beacon blinking next to that means we're trying to get real-time corrections. Whenever you see the word Almanac received, it means we've got an Almanac and it knows where to look for the satellites. I recommend you check the Almanac date by clicking on Skyplot and going to Receiver. Inside of there, you'll see the word Almanac. You always want this date to be two weeks or less. If it's older than two weeks, we recommend that you click on Receiver and go to Setup, and then go into Options and select Reset GNSS Receiver. This will require you to let the receiver sit outside for 12 and a half minutes to obtain a new almanac. Now we'll click on Setup and go to Real-Time Properties. In here, our external source is waiting. We've been connected up for about one minute, and we received a little bit of data. Once we connect to Real-Time, external source will change from waiting to in use. Now we're going to proceed to the Skyplot menu. In here, you can see we're tracking about 10 satellites. They're designated below in a solid black box. For example, satellite R19 is designated in a solid black box. That means we're tracking and using it. The R means it's a Russian satellite. Anything in an open box, for example, number 25, means we're tracking it, but we're not using it. The last thing we're going to focus in on is estimated accuracy. Earlier in this session, we had set accuracy settings up for horizontal in the field. So the four inches designates real-time accuracy, and the arrows at the bottom mean horizontal. So currently, we are seeing four-inch horizontal accuracy. If we click on the arrows, we'll now be able to see the estimated accuracy in the field, horizontal and vertical, as well as the estimated accuracy after post-processing. This concludes our session. So now we're going to click on Skyplot and exit out of Tremble Positions and then exit out of ArcPad. This concludes today's technique session. Please visit neigps.com for more videos, FAQs, and information about upcoming trainings. We thank you for your time and have a great day.